Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our chats with Emily as we are calling our readings through the poetry of Emily Dickinson contained within the Johnson edition. We're at poem 91, so bashful when I spied her. This is another one of those really difficult riddle poems and she ends with I shall never tell and it's not altogether clear what's going on in this poem. In fact, when I said to a colleague of mine who knows Emily Dickinson's poetry well, I was going to give this uh, series of you know talks or chats with Emily as I'm calling them. Um, right away, one of the questions that was asked by my colleague was, well, what are you going to do with poem 91? And, of course, poem 91 is like a number of poems of Emily's where it's not totally clear how to read it. Is Emily having fun and being tongue-in-cheek? Or, as Judith Farr has pointed out, this is maybe a very, very dark poem with some very dark uh, um, under underpinnings, uh, dark underbelly, if you will, of, of the poem. Now, our assumptions are that you've been with us at LearnStrong.net, down that left-hand side again, uh, Chats with Emily, our playlist. I'm hopeful that you've been introduced to our early comments as well as the previous 90 poems that we've worked through. We just finished with Within My Reach. Now, the background here is that Emily has picked a wild flower, and we're, she's not going to tell us who she picked it for, but the personification of the flower as human is what leads to all kinds of interesting interpretations, maybe dark interpretations, um, that would even be potentially sexual and the potential of the notion of deflowering or even some have argued rape. So as we read this poem, notice that we have six so's and then I would recommend in your notes that you have three little categories that you make in regards to word choice at 2B. Um, negative, neutral, and positive. And let's just read the poem and let's see where you put some of these words. So bashful when I spied her, so pretty, so ashamed, so hidden in her leaflets, lest anyone, anybody find. So breathless till I passed her, so helpless when I turned and bore her struggling, blushing, her simple haunts beyond. For whom I robbed the dingle, for whom betrayed the dell, many will doubtless ask me, but I shall never tell. Now, I find this an intriguing poem because of the enigma of the poem. Notice the repetition in the anaphoria of so, 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 six times, right? We begin with the word bashful, which many of you will put in that tripartite declension as a neutral word when I spied her, and then there's exclamation points here. Now, of course, if we're just talking about a flower that's been, you know, seen, spied, a wildflower, then this makes some sense. However, it will be the scholar Farr who will say, you know, there is another rendering of this that's somewhat more darker. Um, and, and we're going to finish it, 3A, by reminding ourselves uh, to his coy mistress and to the virgins that make much of time that we have commented at LearnStrong.net about the dark side of those two poems as well. Notice, bashful when I spied her, pretty is, uh, is the one outright positive word here. And then, of course, the word ashamed will jump into the negative category. So, hidden in her leaflets. Now, most will see hidden as a neutral word, okay? Lest anybody find. So, breathless. Now, I'm going to probably guess you're going to put that one in the neutral uh, category as well till I passed her. So, helpless when I turn. Helpless will, I'm guessing, for most of us, be a negative, uh, go in that negative category when I turn and bore her struggling blushing. Now, maybe blushing for you will be a neutral word, but for sure struggling will be a, a, a negative word. Her simple haunts beyond. Now, of course, the word simple can play as neutral or positive, depending on how you see it. Of course, the word haunts here doesn't mean the verb. It just is the haunts as in the place where she was, and yet haunts itself is a, can be a negative word. For whom I robbed the dingle, um, the the, uh, the the mountainside, right, the meadow. For whom I robbed, robbed obviously is a negative word. For whom betrayed the dell, and again betrayed another word that is going to lead to maybe you putting it in that negative category. Many now who the many are, um, we're we're not we're not sure what readers of this poem, etc. Will doubtless ask me, but I. She'll never tell. Now, of course, the entire poem 
builds to this very last line. Who did I pick the wildflower for? Now, a simple reading of this poem is, I picked the wildflower for somebody, but I'm not going to tell you who it's for, potentially somebody that I care about. All of the words that she chooses, though, most of those words end up in the negative category. I mean, think about it. Ashamed, helpless, struggling, robbed, betrayed, haunts, maybe even blushing, for sure, neutral words, bashful, hidden, breathless, and then the word simple. And then one word only would be the word pretty, which has led any number of readers to this poem to ask, who is it that she's talking about that she will that she picked this for and that she will never tell? By the way, I shall never tell as a phrase is only used one time in all her poetry, and it's here. Um, however, in poem 65, you'll remember, it was, I can't tell you, but you feel it. And then in poem 97, when we get there, the rainbow never tells me that gust and storm are by. Um, however, the word tell is without question one of Emily's most popular words in all of her poetry. Why? Because I think so much about Emily is the attempt to try to verbalize what often is translinguistic and can't be verbalized. Well, at 2A, if we were to work with a message here, what would you say maybe? Uh, some secrets are meant to remain secrets, or are they? The point of writing the poem seems to suggest maybe otherwise. That she almost seems to want people to ask, who are we talking about and what's going on? Which is why, again, we call this series Chats with Emily. And my pal who asked me about Poem 91 and how I was going to deal with it, I said, well, that's the whole point of calling our series Chats with Emily. In other words, there's always something to be found in any of Emily's poetry, I find. At 2B, well, we've mentioned it. Are, are these dark? Are they even sexual words? These words that, um, that she's playing with here. Um, especially words like helpless and struggling and robbed and betrayed. Some have seen even some dark sexual renderings here. At 3A, I cannot help but think that in some ways Emily is playing around with Andrew Marvel's To His Coy Mistress and Robert Herrick's To The Virgins To Make Much Of Time. In both of those poems, as I comment on it, learnstrong.net when I explicate those poems for you guys, those poems carry a dark side as well, no question. For example, in both the poems, the would-be recipient of the uh, of the injunction to um, to to let's let's get this uh, you know going. Uh, the the women in both those poems are never are never speakers. They're just they're just listeners. Finally, at three B, what is for you a secret that you will never tell? And to what degree is a poem like this validate that idea? Thank you.